Welcome back to AP Statistics. I'm Dr. Kling, again not affiliated with the College Board. Today's topic will be called sampling distributions. And if you have no idea what that is, that's probably okay. It doesn't really explain too well what we're talking about, but it's the best title I can come up with. Uh, we're talking about the properties of a sample estimate. So of a sample statistic, in particular, the sample mean, which we call x bar. So uh, let's say we're <coughs> measuring uh, inches of rainfall to get an idea what the average rainfall will be. Uh, so we look every October how much rain there is in the area and let's say we get x bar is equal to 3.2 inches of rain and we get a sample standard deviation s of 1.4 inches of rain. Okay, so that would be a sample of x bar with, with that kind of standard deviation. And typically we take a sample statistic in order to estimate the true unknown parameter. So the unknown parameter, parameter mu is the true average rainfall in October in our example. So we don't know what that is. <coughs> and the thing about classical statistics, and I'm going to say this again several times, but in classical statistics, the parameter has no probability distribution. It is what it is. We just don't know what it is. Okay, so another, so we can only make probability statements about our sampling method. So in practice, our probability statements revolve around x bar, not mu. So that might explain <coughs> a little bit how we start out. Uh, we're we're going to, uh, let's think of mu and sigma. We're going to start out asking and our question is always about the distribution of x bar and we're going to start out assuming step 1 assuming mu and sigma are known remember these are unknown parameters but just as a mathematical exercise what we're going to do in this talk is talk about the distribution of x bar with a known mu and a known sigma and then next, for sort of jargon purposes, we're going to go talk about an unknown mu and a known sigma. So this is this will be so. <coughs> this first stage is to uh, sort of mathematically show the distribution of x bar. The next stage is to give some jargon, introduce some jargon about confidence intervals and hypothesis tests. And then finally we'll talk about an unknown mu and also an unknown sigma. Now that's the most realistic case where you don't know neither the mean nor the standard deviation. So that's a realistic case and we, but you can see we're kind of going to gradually build up to it. So what we're going to do in this talk when we talk about sampling distributions 
is this case here, number one. We're going to pretend that we know the mean and the standard deviation and then say if we did, what would be the likely distribution of x bar? Okay, and last time we had, I mentioned the central limit theorem, which says that the distribution of x bar, and this little squiggle means is approximately distributed, and the n is normal with mean mu standard deviation of sigma over square root of n. I better put that sigma over square root of n, where n is little n is the sample size. Big N means normally distributed. Okay, so in our example of uh, the rainfall, I said <coughs> x bar was what, 3.2 and s is 1.4. So let's say that, um, okay, let's say that the true mu, let's pretend that we know the true mu of rainfall. So pretend that we know it's 3.5, and friends that we know that the true sigma is, is uh, the true sigma is let's say 1.5, and we we might be interested in what the probability that when we take a sample of let's say uh, 10 years so sample size of 10, what's the probability of getting a mean greater than 1 point, oh, sorry, greater than uh, 4.0? Let's say, so what's the probability that the, the sample mean will turn out to be five tenths higher than the true mean if we take a sample size of 10. And we'll take advantage of this normal distribution. We can <coughs> say that create a z is equal to x bar minus mu over sigma over the square root of n is equal to 4.0 minus 3.5 over 1.5 over the square root of 10. Okay, so we pulled out our calculator and we'll clear it. And now we'll compute this z. Um, so we'll take uh, 4 minus 3.5 divided by 1.5 over 10 to the 0 0.5 Let's see what we get. Uh, we did this wrong. So let's put some parentheses up there. Hang on. Okay, that's better. All right, so we get a Z of 1.05. And now we do... Norm CDF. from one I hope this I hope it doesn't get upset at me for doing this uh, before I think maybe I'm going I'm to think I'm just going to do this and then w one minus it because I think it's not going to be happy with, it, with me if I don't nope. um, let's try second I'm just going to put in the whole thing. Normal CDF from 1.05. Is that a comma? 10 
comma zero comma one. Let's see if it likes that. Okay, point one four. So the probability of getting a let's remember that's point one four seven. So the probability So the Z was about 1.04. Norm CDF from Z to a big number was about 1 0.145, did we say? Or 147, something like that. So that would be the probability that we could would observe in our sample a mean of 4 or higher. And those are the types of probability statements you can make about the sample mean. So we could pr calculate the probability that this probability that the sample mean is less than two, or the probability that the sample mean is between uh, 3.3 3 and 3.7. We can do any of those types of calculations using this normal typical working with the normal distribution except we've got this sigma over the square root of n instead of the the old sigma so uh, another use for this and this is analogous to the case of the missing sigma would be to find an n so you can find an n that is how large a sample do you need so that the probability of let's say getting between 3.0 and 4.0 for the x bar is at least equal to 90 percent. Okay, and so what that would mean if we were to draw a normal curve, sketch a normal curve, we know that the true mean is uh, 3.5 and we want to have the probability of getting between 3 and 4 in terms of our natural units to be 90 percent so if there's 90 percent inside then there's 10 percent outside which means there's 5 percent up here and 5 percent down here so we have at this boundary we have 0.05 in terms of percentiles and we have the 95th percentile so our strategy, and I'll leave it to you to walk through the map, would be to take inv-norm of either one of these, and then we'll do the 0.05, and that will give us a z, a target for z, and then we let z is equal to x bar, I'll, do, I'll write it out, x bar minus mu over sigma over square root of n, we have all these things, right? We have the x bar it was 3.0. That's the one that's associated with this boundary. So z star is equal to 3.0 minus the mu which we're given over the sigma. What was the sigma 1.5 over square root of n? Okay. So um, what's the inv norm of 0.05? Hang on a second. Okay, so inv norm point oh five. Okay, negative one point six four. Okay, so we have negative one point six four. So all we have to do is manipulate algebra we move the square root of n up to the numerator and move everything over and we can solve for n and so that's pretty much all we need to know about sampling distributions see you next time